Hi, this is Lee. I've been asked to shoot some videos showing how I like to build a Hercules Gentle Giant. At this point I've already cleaned the cores and now I'm gluing a center section in for an extended version. This particular center section has two 6 inch panels which will make it a 78 inch plane. Then I'm using low temperature hot glue and gluing the multiple pieces here together as you can see. Some of the tricks on holding them in place are, as you can see, using pins. Uh, some people also like to use extreme tape. Uh, I think that the extreme tape is better with the Gorilla Glue and the Goop, and the pins are better because it happens so fast that, uh, that with the hot glue. The uh, cores, as you can see, fit well together. And because it's foam, you would expect it to glue quickly, but the foam holds the heat, so don't get too quick to pull them apart. Uh, the foam is insulated and can take a few minutes for the glue to cool down enough to firmly attach the wing panels in place. Once again, I like to use pins to keep everything well secured. I'm now demonstrating how to measure the distance back on where you need to put your spars. I'm pinning a metal straight edge in place. And I like to use a soldering iron that has the tip ground off flat and a wheel color slit part way up so that it sets a proper depth. And as I cut up and down the wing, I am able to cut a consistent depth that the spar will fit into very cleanly. Once again, pinning the metal straight edge in place. You'll notice that the blunt nose changes the angle on the front of the wing and so I will have to cut that separately so that it blends in. Some people like to use a razor blade and make two cuts and then scrape it out with a screwdriver. Here's that extra angle that ties the blunt nose in with the rest of the sparse lock. Now I'm measuring back the nine and a half inches for the crossbar. This bar is very important because it's the one that supports most of the weight in the plane. You want your top spars directly over your bottom spars, so we're doing the top side now and we're going to flip the wing in just a second. And we will show how we put the spars in the bottom of the wing. Once again, using a soldering iron in order to make sure that these slots on the, across the middle match up with the tip slots. This is now the bottom of the wing. We're doing exactly the same thing, but it's easier because the bottom of the wing is much flatter. Pin the straight edge in place. Since I don't have to go around an angle, I'll just start from the center and cut my way to the tip. You can see why it's good to pin it, otherwise that extension cord would have pulled my straight edge out of place. This video is uh, playing at four times the recorded speed, so it'll give you an idea of how long it takes to actually cut the slot. Each wing has its own distance back that the spars go in order to make it so it will uh, adjust for the nose, flat nose of the plane. You can get those dimensions again on CrashTestHobby.com. It is very important that you have a clean connection between the front spars and the cross spar because they will be tied together during further construction methods. I'm now going to demonstrate how to put the motor mount onto the wood block. Some of the motors have a wheel collar and the shaft poking out the back and some do not. For those that do, you have to make room for that wheel collar and shaft to turn so they don't rub. That's what I'm doing here. You'll notice that uh, it doesn't take much with a file to get plenty of room for that shaft. Once again, marking it, both depth and width, and then filing it out. Motor mounts are very durable. We've been real pleased with their performance.
now I'm going to put screws in the back of the motor mount blocks in order to screw the metal plate to the wood blocks. And you can see it turns freely. I'm now going to demonstrate how to put the wood blocks of motors into the wing. You need to measure out so that the motors are exactly the same distance from the center of the wing. You want both of them pointing straight forward. You want at least a half inch to three quarters inch prop clearance. If there's any chance you're going to put larger motors on, you may want even more than that. After I have confirmed my distance and my location, and make sure that I have the prop clearance that I need, I'm going to take a razor blade and cut a, the edge of the slot and then make some relief cuts so that I can remove the foam. And then I'll pull those pieces of foam out with pliers. I have found that hot glue works well here, but it's heavier. But it, and Gorilla Glue expands well and fills all the gap. Uh, I have used Gorilla Glue on the last two that I have built and uh, have been pleased with the outcome. You could also use Goop. Uh, it will also dry over, over a few hours and set well. I learned that you want the motor block to sit down into the foam a little bit deeper if you're using the Gorilla Glue because it will tend to rise about 32nd to a 16th of an inch and you don't want to have it uh, higher than the foam around it. You want it as close as it can be. Right now I'm drawing the location where the spars cross the motor mount. It's okay if the spars only cross on the front location as long as you put the Formica over the back so that the uh, second spar is also giving support to the wing. In this case we're cutting with a razor blade. I'm going to remove from the other direction, show you another option. After I'm done pulling the foam out, I'll use my soldering iron to square up the corners to get as close of a fit as I can. We don't want to have to use any more glue than is needed. Again, make sure the best you can that it's just slightly under the level of 